Hi, my name is Quinn Bowden, and my project is on techniques for tracking sirens. The research problem that we encounter when trying to track sirens is that they have a distinct morphology and behavioral ecology that makes it particularly difficult. They only have these front two limbs, so attaching any kind of external harness to them is near impossible. And with their thin, permeable amphibian skin and their aquatic habitat, just gluing any kind of device to the exterior of them is also pretty near impossible. Um, their regenerative abilities and fluctuating natural markings also make it pretty hard to track them without any kind of device. So over the course of this presentation, I'm going to go over three different techniques that are possible to use for tracking sirens, and I'm going to give my recommendation on which one I think is best. The first technique I would like to go over is harmonic direction finding. This consists of an emitter and a dipole. Your emitter will produce radio waves, which are then reflected on the, off of the dipole, which is on your organism, as a harmonic wave, which can be read as a directional signal. And you can hone in on this signal by following the strongest part of it in order to find your organism. Harmonic direction finding is that it doesn't require any batteries, so it's great for long-term studies. And likewise, because it doesn't require batteries, the dipoles can be really lightweight and really small, and they can fit on individuals who are too small to radio tag. Also, both the tags themselves and the receivers are pretty cheap, making this a great economic option. However, there's no individual identification with harmonic direction finding, so you need to actually find your organism and have some other way of identifying it in order to get that information. The range is also pretty limited. It's less than that of radio telemetry, um, and radio telemetry has been found to be more consistent and at least tracking terrestrial amphibians. Um, as I mentioned before, it doesn't give any location data, just directional data, so you'd have to actually find your organism again in order to get a locational fix. And specifically with sirens, attaching dipoles to sirens can be tricky. As I mentioned before, due to their morphology, they only have these two limbs and thin permeable skin, making an external tag near impossible. And an internal dipole would require threading an antenna through their body, which can be pretty, pretty tricky when they have this fragile skin. The next technique I would like to go over are PIT tags, passive integrated transponder tags. This is an internal tag. Um, and it is, it is passive, as I mentioned before, so it doesn't have any kind of battery. The receiver will scan the tag, and when it does, it'll create an electromagnetic field, which will cause the tag to send back an al alphanumeric code, which can be used to identify your organism. So some of the pros of PIT tags are that they have quite a long lifespan because they don't require any batteries. Just like harmonic direction finding, they are cheaper than telemetry. The tags are pretty inexpensive to make, only cost a couple dollars. And while it is invasive, it has really low rates of infection and has little to no effect on growth rates or movement in reptiles and amphibians. With pit tags, you also have the option of having automated scanners in the field, which allows you for really time efficient monitoring and less needed field labor because you can set up your receivers in the field to monitor without you. Um, this internal tag is also much easier to use with sirens and has a lot less added complications. Pit tags. Um, the tags can be shed or forced out due to bodily rejection or natural activity, burrowing, and such. And detect and de detection distances are still less than that of radio telemetry. Um, and if you are doing this automatically and you have your receivers out in the field, you're going to need lots of receivers in order to accurately track them. And these receivers can be a bit expensive, so it's not quite as economic an option as the harmonic direction finding. So the last technique I'd like to go over is radio telemetry. Um, this consists of a battery powering a transmitter, which is on your organism. This transmitter is going to produce radio waves, and then your receiver can detect these radio waves, and you can use it to either hone in on your VHF pulse, your very high frequency, or if you have a GPS radio telemetry collar, you can use this to get location fixes. Telemetry is it has longer detection ranges than the other methods I've gone over, um, and it gives locational information rather than just direction like the harmonic does. So it gives you a location fix. This high precision data does allow you to make to get a lot of information about the animal's movements, their behavior, environment, and make inferences based on that. Um, the GPS option also allows for remote tracking and location fixes, but isn't always the best with creatures this small. Some of the cons of radio telemetry are that with our sirens ecology that doesn't allow for long or external antennae, you have to have an internal tag, 
which is going to shorten your detection range just a little bit, and it's also going to limit your size. Um, because this relies on battery power, the smaller the device and the smaller the battery, the more short-lived it is, so it's not really ideal for long-term studies with small animals. Um, the equipment is very expensive, and this can also limit your passive tracking ability because of the number of receivers you're going to need. So my recommended technique for tracking sirens is the pit tag. It is long term. They are internally placed and very small. Overall, they're relatively cheap and they provide an individual identification while actually having to locate your animal. I'd like to quickly thank all the researchers whose papers I read when doing this project. And of course, my audience, thank you for listening to me. Have a wonderful day.